Oh my goodness, why am I getting all emotional? Originally I said I wanted to get engaged in 2022. I don't know if like gaslighting is the right word. They just won't believe me. I don't want to, I don't want to say it. I don't really love someone. And I told Ryan this too. I'm not ready to move out. I wish I could stop time. Hey everyone, it's Katrina and welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited because I always love coming on here and chatting with you all and answering your questions. And Merit is here again, giving me that push of encouragement I need to sit down and do my makeup with you all. I'm not someone who is very confident with my makeup skills. I've been rocking the same makeup look for years and all I do to change things up is like switch the lipstick color. But I've been really enjoying their products. I've been using them since 2021 when they first reached out to me. I will link like my past videos in the description box or put it in the cards. But I really love Merit and what they stand for. They are a clean beauty brand with minimal makeup. They don't go overboard with producing a bunch of different products to sell. They're really intentional about their ingredients, their packaging, and they recently came out with their holiday gift set. This is the La Fête Edition. <laughs> I just googled that but hopefully I didn't butcher it too much. This holiday set, it has their Great Skin Serum which I'm super excited to try because this is supposed to be really hydrating or under your makeup. This is my favorite mascara, the Clean Lash Mascara in the mini size. This is a limited edition lipstick that I have on my lips right now. Their highlighter in Bounce and a gel pomade, but this one is actually in a neutral color. The one that I typically use is in brown. This one is in a neutral color, so it's for everyone. And this goes for $75, which is about 30% cheaper than if you were to buy the individual products off their site. And if you shop from their website, you get free shipping at $40, so this would ship for free. And if it's your first order with Merit, it comes with a cute little cosmetic suede bag. Is this suede? Corduroy. It's a corduroy bag. So I'm gonna switch the scene to me without makeup and then I'm gonna answer your questions and we're gonna have a good time. All right, enjoy. First product is the Merit Great Skin Serum and I'm really excited about this because it's supposed to be really good for people with dry skin. You put it under your makeup for that like natural glow. So we'll see because in the winter, dude, my nose is flaky. I had to reapply lotion four times on my nose already this morning. Oh, it's like a very liquidy kind of, <laughs> it reminds me of sauce, but I'm just gonna apply it. It feels like very lightweight. It absorbs into the skin. I'm gonna put one more pump. Does it give me that glow? Do I look glowy? I got a facial a couple of days ago, so I have more scars than usual and my skin has been feeling really dry and quite sensitive. But this feels pretty nice. So I asked you all on Instagram to submit some questions and you all had really great questions. I chose eight of them. I'm gonna see how many I can get through um, and I'm going to try my best to talk as I do my makeup. So the serum is supposed to pair really well with the Minimalist. Usually this does feel a little bit more drying to me so I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna use this and then some of this foundation. This is just a random foundation I got from this beauty expo for work. It's from Inika Organic. Um, they just had it as like a sample, so I chose the one that's closest to my shade. The first question is, when do you think you will feel ready to leave home and either live alone or with Ryan? Honestly, that's a really loaded question because if we're speaking practically, I don't think I'm ready to pay money on LA rent if I don't have to. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be ready for that, especially if I know that in the near in the somewhat nearish future, I will want to have a wedding, um, buy a house, and just saving up for all of that while paying rent here, it seems quite impossible while also having, you know, like money, enough money to do like things I want to do. I feel mixed feelings to be very honest because on the one hand, I do crave experiences that will push me to become more independent. I really do miss kind of that college vibe of just having my own schedule doing things on my own yet i also feel this very real duty to be here with my parents for this time and i am enjoying living at home with my parents right now i feel like um i'm not ready to move out yet and i told ryan this too i'm not ready to move out but there also is this part of me that does want you know 
this independence by myself before I settled down. But in reality, I don't really see myself moving away from home during this time, especially because I have my own space here, have my own room, have my own restroom. And for the most part, like in the daytime, I am by myself. And I am also enjoying being with my parents right now, seeing them more. And I feel like there's only a little bit more time for me to be able to do that. And so I do want to cherish that as well. So second question is who said I love you first? <laughs> so Ryan was the one that said I love you first. Um, and actually, I don't think I said it back for another several months. And we had kind of like a running joke going that instead of saying I love you, I would, when he said I love you, I would respond with thank you. And it just kind of became this like inside thing that we knew that when I said thank you, it encompassed a lot. It was kind of my way to say I love you without having that pressure to say it. And you know, the more I think about it now, I think the reason why I was so scared to say it is because I had never said it before. And thinking now, I feel like society, the media, you know, everything that we're surrounded with makes us feel like love, that word saying I love you to someone is so heavy, has so much weight, and we need to be really, really sure we mean it um, before we say it to someone. And there's always these questions of like, oh, like, when did you say I love you? Do you love this person? And it made me feel so scared. Like, oh gosh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say it, but I don't really love someone. But the more I think about it, I feel like there's no objective of what love is objectively for everyone. I feel like it's such a subjective word, such a subjective feeling. And I think sometimes it is so scary to use that word um, when you know it may not be reciprocated, when you may not even be in a relationship with someone. Maybe you're in a relationship, but it hasn't been that long. Maybe you've just dated, whatever it is. I feel like it's so scary to use the word love but when I reflect back, I'm just going based off like what I feel for people, what I felt for people. And I do think that I probably loved many more people in my life than I have said I love you to. But I was so scared and still kind of feel like this fear to admit it because I know it's probably not reciprocated. But I think I think it's okay and I'm trying to move past that. Like I shouldn't be embarrassed to feel and have love in my heart for people, even if they don't feel the same way towards me. Um, it's just for me, this word that symbolizes like people that are always in my heart and always will mean a lot to me. Um, and so even with Ryan, like sometimes I'm always like, what is love? Like, do I love you? Do you think I love you? Like, do you love me? Why do you love me? <laughs> it becomes this whole thing because it's so confusing. Like, I feel like people always go, you, you, you'll just know when you love someone, but I don't know, I've, I've never felt that way where it's just that moment, but I do think there's a lot of different kinds of love and whatever you feel is valid and is fair and it doesn't need to match whatever someone else's definition of love is. That was the super longest explanation of a question you didn't even ask. <laughs> Ryan was the first one to say I love you. I'm gonna do my eyebrows, but the next question is, how do you balance work, relationship, and home life? I will say that I feel like it is so much easier now that I'm not teaching because when I was teaching, even when I was attempting to balance family, friends, my relationship, my mind was never truly away from teaching and work. I was always thinking about something in the back of my head and it made me not really be able to be present in what I was doing. But now, for the most part, I feel like when I am not physically working, I'm able to mentally check out of work as well. And that allows me to just be more dedicated to whatever it is that I'm actually doing in that moment. I think a big part of balance is also having that separation of space and time. Like for me, I know that during the day um, when both my parents are at work, I am also working and I work here and I'm in my room working on the days that they work from home. And so there is that space between us. And then I know that evenings are for dinner with my parents. We eat dinner on the weekdays and I try my best not to schedule other things um, during that time. And I do have dance class, but dance class is after that. And then on the days that I eat out with friends or with Ryan, I just make sure to let my parents know ahead of time. But I do dedicate that time to parents. And then Thursdays, now um, it's been 11 weeks, 
I've been doing something fun with my parents. So I know that Thursday nights are for a more extensive activity with parents. That evening portion, like after dinner, after my walk with my mom, I know that those several hours are for me. That's when I'll do my Dropbox. That's when I'll email brands. That's when I'll edit my videos. And I just get to take care of my own stuff. And then as it gets closer to the end of the night, and I'm headed, getting ready for bed, that's when Ryan and I will call each other if we're both free and that becomes like the time for the both of us. And so I think having that blocking period throughout the day for certain people and yourself included helps. Weekends is where it gets a little bit hard because weekends are not enough time for everything. Um, usually it'll be family parties or going to visit our grandparents but this year because Ryan and I are hanging out with friends more it honestly has been a challenge to try to balance all of those things and we found that like the hack is like to go out with friends Friday night if possible because it feels like it extends that weekend a little bit and we're still able to have that Saturday and Sunday. I feel like my eyebrows are super uneven like when I look in the mirror I don't know like this one is I'm really struggling with it lately I'm gonna try the pomade I don't really like that bushy bushy messy brow look so I just kind of use this to keep my brow hairs in place I think I might actually go in with their brown one when the eyebrows are done and nothing else is it looks a little weird but we're gonna roll with it and hopefully by the end it looks okay I'm going to put a little bit of powder on my face this is also from that beauty expo the same brand Inca um, I'm just gonna put a little bit. Eyeshadow time, still here using the chocolate bar palette. The next question is, what do you wish you were better at? A lot of things. <laughs> I wish I was better at cooking. I wish I was better at driving. I wish I was better at social situations, better at feeling confident and comfortable going out and doing things by myself. I wish I was a better dancer. But I think in terms of like soft skills, um, something I do really want to get better at is being a better active listener and listening to truly listen and understand um, and ask like really good follow-up questions to learn more about it rather than listening to just give my two cents and listening to talk, if that makes sense. Next question, is love ever enough? This one felt really deep and I think my answer is that no, I don't think that love is enough because well i guess i don't really know what the question is but in terms of is love enough to sustain a long-lasting relationship a marriage um, a partnership a lifelong commitment i don't think it is enough because i think that a lasting and effective and healthy relationship more than love it's a choice it is a series of a bunch of different choices that we make to go through life with this person because what I think I'm learning more about myself and the way I view relationships and view love is that I don't think that they're like soulmates where like you're only meant to fit with one person. I think that in life we could probably work with multiple people and it becomes this how many of your boxes you know of that checklist of a person does this person like check off and are you okay with that and are you okay with making it work you know with that person because I don't know relationships are tough man being in a relationship has really challenged me and stretched me in so many ways it's allowed me to learn more about myself I don't know it's a tough question and I'd love to hear your thoughts but I think for me I'm a little bit more maybe my relationship is a little bit different because we started off as just very platonic friends I didn't have that like storybook love rom-com like love story and so for me from the get-go it was a lot more than just that like butterfly feeling um it was constant series of like pros and cons and choices and choices and thoughts and all these things to weigh and i think that because of that open communication throughout the entire process we're able to build this kind of relationship out of so much more than just love it's out of this true commitment to i think like learn support each other be here for each other as we figure out and try to tackle the parts of ourselves that are really not so pretty and that the part of ourselves that hurt each other um and to try to 
become better for ourselves and for each other. I don't know. Sometimes I think that love can be there, but they might not be the best person for you in terms of a relationship. <laughs> I'm gonna pause because I think I'm just gonna ramble without any real point. I guess kind of along those lines, the next question was, when are you going to get married? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even engaged yet. And honestly, I, I tell Ryan too, like I'm not in a really big rush to get married. Like I think the main things for me that I feel like why I would want to get married earlier is because I think I would want, well not I think, I would want my grandparents to be a part of my wedding day. And you know, it's nothing is ever a guarantee with people, especially elders. Um, but at the same time, I'm not like super rushing. I don't think I'm quite ready to go into that next chapter. I, I've been really enjoying like just reaching this new chapter of our dating life where we're now spending more time with friends. Overall, I am not itching for like married life yet. I don't want to like live together yet. I just, I'm enjoying taking things the way they are now. Um, but I do get excited like looking at wedding stuff sometimes. So I am excited yet not in a rush. Um, and as for when we're gonna get married, I don't know, probably like 2024 at the earliest. Originally I had said I wanted to get engaged in 2022 and then I was like, actually, I don't know. I don't think I want to anymore. And so <laughs> kind of like pumped the brakes on that. I think I gave Ryan the green light. Like, okay, I'm more, I'm more ready now, but I think I just want him to know that if we do get engaged, it doesn't mean like I'm like whoop, ready for that next step. Like I would love for that engagement to just be that little next thing, but then we still remain the way we are right now to just figuring things out, spending time. Like I do not want to be a unit, like doing everything together and just being like, whoop. like I don't want that yet. Actually, I don't think I want that ever. <laughs> next question is what's something your parents do that you hope to continue doing with your future kids. Um, the first thing that came to mind, I think, was having dinner together. As far as I could remember, like, we've always eaten dinner as a family, um, and I, I didn't realize until I was a little older that a lot of my cousins and friends don't eat dinner together with their families, and so that is something I definitely want to do in the future. I think that it just makes it this dedicated time to be together, and it's not like me and my parents like we talk a lot during dinner but it just becomes this time that you know is the time where we're all doing the same thing and we are spending that time together um so for us it's like no tvs no phones um it's just us eating dinner and i would love to be able to do that with my future family i'm just gonna use the like black as eyeliner i can't talk oh oh god oh not too bad. Oh no, I went a little too much. Okay. You know when you go one side and then you start like adding, 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 and then you have like big old eyeliners? I don't want that. Next question is, what do you wish more people knew about you? Um, a lot of people, I think, think that I'm like so outgoing, so like extroverted, and I don't think that could be like further from the truth. I'm super anxious when it comes to things like social events like with certain people i'm definitely more comfortable just kind of you know being myself and with others it i think i can still be okay but it does take a lot more effort and um not not to say that that's a bad thing i think it's just like different there's a lot of times where i reach out to someone or i'm saying something or i'm posting something or i go out with someone and I'm actually super nervous and I think people think oh those things must come so easy to her blah blah she like posts all over social media and stuff but it doesn't and I, I think that sometimes people kind of like mm, I don't know if like gaslighting is the right word they just won't believe me when I am trying to describe myself and how I know I am um, and I know that it takes a lot of effort to do these things and and a lot of times like I do feel super nervous or like I, I ruminate a lot and I just feel like sometimes people discount that because of like the way I portray myself and I I just wish that sometimes I don't know that they would believe the way I know I am instead of trying to label me a certain way we got blush I'm going to mix my two merit ones again this is the Bevler Be <laughs> this is Beverly Hills and terracotta almost done with this one. It's my favorite. 
little bit on my nose. I feel like it's really subtle and nice and like you can just kind of put more and build it up if you want to. I always feel like I put so much makeup on and then I take a picture or like I, I see someone else with makeup and it's like, hmm, it feels like I don't actually have, have any makeup on me. So I'm gonna go try to go a little heavier for the holiday vibes. Even though today, today's friend miss party, friends, today's friends, oh my gosh, I can't say that. Today's friends miss party is a onesie party. So I'm gonna have this whole like makeup look and then be in a little fuzzy onesie. So for highlighter, we are using the Merit Highlighter in Bounce. That's the one that is in the little set, but I have one already. So I'm gonna use the one that I already opened. Do you see that like little shine? It's very smooth to apply. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of the RMS Living Luminizer. I'm almost out and I'm just gonna put it in that inner corner. Oh God, oh God, too much. Kind of messy. Oh, ooh. my fingers are all messy. So there's like a light little glow. And now we are going to try this lipstick. I'm excited. It's like a red, a bright red lipstick. Bringing you all in for the lipstick application. I feel like I'm so messy. It's like all over. Then there's spots that I missed. I have a serious question. Like I, I always miss that little corner. How do I get it? Is, is this something like I need a lip liner brush to do or? Oh, I forgot mascara. So last step is mascara. And the last question is looking back at exactly one year ago, are you surprised at where you are now and at your progress? And yeah, I really, really am. And <laughs> oh my goodness, why am I getting all emotional? I recently wrote a blog post about um, the moment I decided to quit teaching, which was just around this time last year. It was on January 2nd. And writing that blog post, I looked back at my journal entries, at conversations that I had this time last year. And I was in a really dreadful spot. I was on winter break this time last year. Actually this time, this exact day last year, my best friend got engaged and we were planning her proposal. So that was a, a fun day. But at that time, I was stressing out. I was feeling so, so dreadful when I thought about second semester. I mean, I, I, I didn't know what 2022 would look like. And in so many ways, this year was unexpected, yet exactly what I was looking for, even though I also felt as I was thinking about this year, I was like, man, what did, what even happened this year? I feel both like it went by so fast, yet it went by slowly. It felt like sometimes I was just in such a stagnant place, like there's so much more time, yet why am I not making the most out of my time? Why does it feel like there's so many days where I'm still like laying in bed until 11, 12, not getting much done, even though I have so much more time. And when I read back to that journal a year ago, I realized I wasn't looking to have the time so I could be uber, uber productive. I wanted to rest. I wanted to be able to say that it's okay to have boundaries for myself and to put myself first and to just not feel like I was drowning all the time. And seeing where I am now, it's so easy to be hard on myself again, but it's those reflections that make me really realize, like those quotes that always say, you know, you are where your past self like wanted to be. This truly is a dream to be able to work but not feel like I am like struggling to get my head above water every day, to be able to have time to dance, to make videos, to hang out with friends, family, to sleep in. I feel very grateful, even though I feel a little bit stuck and unsure of what comes next and I feel like sometimes I'm just wasting my days. I really wanna just take some time to be proud of myself because this wouldn't have been possible had I not had the courage 
um, and the support to step away from my job at a time where I just needed to rest and heal. And I think that this year has been so much, so much that I haven't shared publicly, so much that I have shared publicly, but just so many feelings, mixed emotions, ups and downs, but I just feel proud of myself for just remaining true to myself and for taking those baby steps to prioritize myself and to set those boundaries even though um, there is very much a lot of guilt as well. Like nothing is black and white. Nothing is so easy, but I see so much growth in me. And 27, you know, 27 years old, which is this year, my age, 2022, really was a year where I was practicing putting myself first, setting boundaries, chasing little happiness, and practicing self-compassion, which was that word that I had set for myself at 27, you know, on my birthday. I just feel so happy to have this mental freedom and so happy that I was able to step back into the classroom in the summer too. Sometime last week, I was thinking like, am I happy? I don't, I don't know because I don't think that like happy is this like long stretch of time where it's like happy, but it's like happy moments for sure. And I do feel just at peace a lot of the times. And I think more than chasing this constant feeling of happiness, feeling at peace is what is really wonderful. And that's not to say that there are not a million things that I want to work on and improve and continue growing and getting better at, but just really savoring this moment in my life right now. I wish I could stop time, honestly, for a little bit and um, just enjoy this period of my life a little more because as always, things are gonna happen Things are going to get harder and then easier and then better, but um, there's just so many little moments to enjoy. And I, I thank you for spending this moment with me here. I do not even know and was not expecting me to get all emotional, but I'm just sitting here looking at my afternoon. Uh, I wish I could show you. This is what I was looking at right now, and it is my favorite time of day. It is when the afternoon sun shines into my room and casts this beautiful like shadow of the window on my wall. And I just have really enjoyed just these little moments like that. And um, I feel really grateful. So yeah, I don't know. With that, I want to wish you all a happy, happy holidays. And just a reminder to check out Merit to get this beautiful set for yourself. And I will see you all in the next year. And take care, stay warm, and I'll see you soon. Bye.